Hello, great men and women of God. It's great to be with you. Here I am in my own personal Eden while I sit and I share with you the Word of God. And we're now going to continue with Genesis 1 verse 1. Our last lecture was a very important lecture because it deals with science versus creation. And as I have expressed to you, I really, really believe that we are in a situation which, which we're in a place which God has made, formed by His hand. I don't believe in the old earth. I don't believe it's billions and billions of years old. I believe God has been tracking man, put Adam and Eve, descended all the people, the nations of the earth from Adam and Eve. It's scientifically so probable, so possible that I firmly believe it. And the Bible tells, tells me it. Jesus believes it. I believe it. Why should we start changing all of that? Hallelujah. So this time really is just to spend a bit more time in the Word of God to to just allow the Word of God just to do what it wants to do. Um, I've assumed of course that you've already read Genesis chapter 1. I'm not necessarily going to read every single verse because some of it is quite a um, bit of copies from different places but let's just go with this and see how we go. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters and God said let there be light and there was light. God saw that the light was good and separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Now, first few things that we see straight away. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Just for interest, the word God is the word Elohim in Hebrew. All the, all the verbs are singular, which means that it indicates that there is one God. However, the word God, Elohim, is actually plural. And that just shows an indication. It's a very powerful thing. It's actually inaccurate Hebrew. It just doesn't make sense perfectly. But yet what God is showing is that He is actually three in one. He is Elohim. Three in one. And yet He is one God. That is why all the verbs are singular. Okay. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the second thing that we get there is God speaks. Now, it's one of the, that's, by the way, it's a very powerful truth. It's the truth that you just need to get deep into your heart. God speaks all the time. He spoke the whole world into existence. All God had to do was speak a word, and it is. He speaks now, and it is. He speaks deliverance of your life, and it is. He speaks freedom of your life, and it is. He speaks provision of your life, and it is. He speaks. He continues to speak. God speaks, and it is. Everything has to respond to the voice of God, and all we require is a word of God. Or if you and I can, by our spirits, see God, hear God speaking something, it will be um, if we have that need and we can see God saying yes. It is because when God speaks, there's substance to everything He says. And He made light. Let there be light, and there was light. And He saw that the light was good, and He separated the light from the darkness. So the darkness was already present, but He said, Let there be light. The, the reality here is that the separated from light from darkness is really the whole gospel in a nutshell, isn't it? Because really everything we do, everything God is doing at the moment is to separate light from darkness in your life. Amen. Now, the second thing we see a lot of here is we see a lot of days. God is very clear on the day thing. All right, It's almost hard to understand the day thing because the day thing is in comprehension of... of um, you know the sun and the earth rotating and everything else but the reality is is God was very clear that there was a short space of time in his creational process I think that is the main thing we want to see he also is trying to put a lot of emphasis on the six day work week versus on the seventh day rest God placed a lot of emphasis on that so that you and I can get an understanding that we are supposed to rest and get close to God. We're not here just to work and to work this earth. We are also here to develop our spiritual lives. Can I just say that? Watch out for that in your life. Watch out for the natural overtaking the supernatural. Because you're so busy trying to make your life happen, you forget that seventh day. You forget that God wants your heart and He wants that balance. And the Bible spends a lot of time giving that in Genesis chapter 1. Now, going forward from here, we get a very good clarity, and most of the verses are very, very similar, so I'm not going to read them all. Six, he made the waters, he made, he made uh, the sky um, in verse 9, let the water and the sky be gathered together, and so it was, he made the dry ground. In verse 11, we find out that he made um, the plants, seed-bearing plants and trees in the land that bear fruit and seed in it according to their various kinds. And so the Bible says there's multiple kinds of things that God produced. 
Amen. It wasn't just evolution. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky. And we get the sun, um, the sun and the moon in the vaults of the sky. We could also point out that the earth was very different in the days of creation to maybe the way we see it now. The, the event of Noah was a very major event for this earth. Um, so it would have been different in a variety of ways. Possibly that it was a permanent cloud bank over the earth at all times. And so the light governing the day was not like a sun that we can see as we see it today, but just a light over the um, through the clouds, so to speak, as when we see the sun through the clouds. We hear in verse 20, let the water teem with living creatures, let birds fly up above the earth and across the vault of the sky. And so God created the great creatures and the waters teemed with it. God bless them, be fruitful, and increase in number, fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase in the earth. Verse 23, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures. Verse 24, according to the kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so, and God made the wild animals according to the kinds, the livestock according to the kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And it still is good. Hallelujah. It still is good. Look at the beauty around me. It is good. God made it and He looked at it and it was good. And may I just say this, when He saw it was good, He didn't make sickness and disease. We have a problem here. We often see sickness and disease as just part of, of life and death, part of life. At this point, when God made the heavens and the earth, there was no death. You've got to really get that. You know, it's funny to imagine a world without death. But I've got news for you. Death is just a result of the presence of the evil one and the presence of sin at work in this world. There was no death in the original creation. Death only entered in when the devil entered in and he gained access to this earth. And as the Bible was also very, very clear that at a certain time, uh, we will not die anymore. That's called eternal life. The eternity that God has, the, the recreation of the earth, there won't be death. All right. So death will eventually be taken away. It's a glorious thing, isn't it? Okay, so don't make death a big thing in your life. God has never intended death to be a big thing. Ultimately, in God, we are supposed to live and stay alive in Him and live in Him forever and ever and ever. Now, let's look at verse 27 together. This is a very powerful verse. So God created mankind in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. Male and female, He created them. So God created mankind in his own image. Now this is the big thing that we want to get home. When God made the animals, he didn't look at his image and make them in his image. When he made man, he said, I will create him in my image. I'll create her in my image. Why? Because God wanted, in a sense, a family. He wants you and me to be of the nature of God, an authority, a place, a person who can know right from wrong in the end, of course, at this time point. That wasn't to be understood. Verse 27, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. You can see it's a bit like prose. Prose means like poetry that was built into the Bible. All right, And it was expressed this way. Maybe this is a way that the old, the old great men of God before Moses remembered the truth of creation. Okay. So um, through a poem and stuff like that, which basically presented the truth. So we know that man was created in the image, man and woman were created in the image of God. Okay, and that is a very, very important thing. We'll come back to that. That is why God expects us to be like Him. He expects us to be pure as He's pure. That's why we can't just mess around with all the junk all the time on the left and on the right. We've got to make truth, we've got to make standards of truth. We've got to say we're going to stand on this truth and go forward with that. Hallelujah. Verse 28, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase the number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that is fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. Notice that he didn't give meat at this point, okay? Meat came later. And to all the beasts of the earth and the birds of the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, Everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw all that He had made, and it was very good. All right? It was very good. There was no disease, there was no sickness, there was nothing. Because God had made it, and He made it the way He made it. Perfect, perfect in every side and every way. Hope you enjoyed the birds that I'm listening to out there. It is after all creation that we're talking about. Hallelujah. 
Um, chapter 2 verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. But the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it he rested from the work of creation that he had done. And so that's a standard. This is like a seedbed in so much of the Bible. This is a standard for us. The standard here is that God wants us to have a rest day. He wants us to devote that rest day to him. He wants us to have a balanced life in every single thing. He doesn't want us to be so consumed with just our natural lives that we don't devote ourselves into the spiritual. Be careful of that. I know you want to make your life happen. I get it. God knows that as well. That's why he gave us these verses to, to give us the glorious balance um, in all of these areas. Hallelujah. So this is the main things I want to say. One of the stuff that God also said is that when he said, um, fill the earth and subdue it, be faithful, fruitful, increase in numbers, this is in verse 28, he has a mandate for us, which basically is to look after this earth. Now there's some side effects of that. Let me just talk a little bit about that. When God placed us here, he said, look after it, rule over it, look after it. I give it to you to look after, okay? Um, that is the heart of what God is doing here. Now, that also means that conservation is also something important to a child of God. We don't want the whales. I'm not trying to say you must make your life about conservation. I really am not. Because you make your life about Jesus. But you should be concerned about the living creatures on this earth. Because God's original mandate was for you to be concerned. Okay? We are supposed to rule on it. We are supposed to fill the earth and subdue it. We are supposed to take control over it. And we're supposed to have value, find value in it. You know, the Christian perspective is not, hey, this world, I'm not interested in conservation. You should be. When you are chopping down every tree near your umzi to burn, you must be thinking because God gave you this earth to look after. When you want to kill every animal in, in the middle of Africa because you're hungry, think about it. God told you to to look after this earth that means you've got to conserve it that means yes there's a place where you're going to eat but yes there's a place where you've got to keep things alive because that is God's thing to you so just think a little bit about that that's very important I believe that's one of the things that the Lord wants to reveal to us here I think the other thing that you should always keep in mind is that everything everything God made is good so in finishing off this lecture I know this has been a slightly shorter one, but a lot of the scientific stuff I've already handled um, in, previous, in, in my previous lecture, so I'm not going to go into the scientific side. But I think you've got enough here just to make you realize what God wants to, to teach us and to show us. And I'm going to meet you in Genesis chapter 2. Father, thank you, Lord God, for your word, power of your spirit, and every good and glorious thing that you're revealing and doing here. Thank you, Lord God, for your kingdom and your power of your spirit, Father God. Now I pray, Father, you keep opening the word to us. Let us grow, let us be consistent in our studies, and never give up. Thank you, Lord God. And everybody said, Amen. Mm -hmm.